Give me a little more. Lean, you little short there. <laughs> That's all you need. That's all I need. Stand still. Huh? <laughs> oh my goodness. If the Lord were to take you home tonight, how many of you could sing that song? I don't mean sing it, but mean it. How many of you would mean it that it's well with your soul tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't mean we've done everything right. Doesn't mean that we're uh, uh, bragging about anything like that. It just means that we know who's going to make it right. We're going to trust the Lord to, to take care of the, the things that uh, we, we couldn't take care of. Tonight I'm going to be preaching uh, out of the 11th chapter of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. We did 12 last Sunday, but we've been skipping around a little because of the weather. And I wanted, to, I wanted this one for the Thursday night crowd. I wanted you to hear this one tonight. Uh, I'm going to call this sermon tonight, Leading Legitimately. Now we are all leading people. Uh, people are following us, every one of you. Uh, somebody's watching your life, somebody's wanting to be like you, follow you, walk in your steps, speak like you do, sing like you do, whatever. People are watching us and uh, there's a way to lead them legitimately to the Lord and there are ways to not lead them to the Lord, to lead them away. Um, there are many spiritual leaders, nationally known, uh, high profile people who are bilking millions of dollars from silly people looking for signs and miracles and we have to be careful who we follow because uh, i got a feeling someday some people are going to have to give an account to the Lord for how they have handled ministries. Uh, let me give you just a few examples of the Branch Davidians, Heaven's Gate, People's Temple, Scientology, Unification Church. Uh, all of these are offering, and many, many more, thousands more, but they're offering us alternative uh, methods to get to heaven. They're, they're trying to say they're coming come my way, do it my way, you know, uh, and, and everything will be fine. But I want to say, very, I want to caution you tonight. Just because someone brings a message to you that's beautiful and, and presented powerfully doesn't necessarily make it right. As if it doesn't come in line with the Bible, if it doesn't follow it. I, I would tonight, my encouragement to you is to find the core message of the Word of God. Find what God's Word says. Find that core message and, and make it your lifelong quest to live it out. Make it your job and your joy and your, your journey to live that life out that you've found in the core values of the Bible. Let me give you a few examples. Make sure that you believe in a, 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 a living Lord Jesus Christ who, is, who died on a cross who rose again and is coming back one day. Make sure that you have your idea about how to get to heaven by, by grace and not by works. Not by being good, but by a trusting in the finished work of Christ. Make sure you are living out that, that core values of God's Word. Tonight out of the 11th chapter, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I, I've leaned heavily tonight on the message. It's a, a translation uh, of the Word of God. I'll be preaching for the New International Version, but uh, sometimes the message says things in certain ways that, that we we need to hear it. Tonight I'm, I've leaned on it heavily, but I want to talk, I'm going to go ahead and we'll be reading out of the New International Version. But many leaders were had tried to lead that Corinthian church, uh, and they weren't all following God. They weren't all following the Word of God. They were trying to lead them into other heresies. They were trying to introduce different ways of thinking and understanding the message of Christ. In fact, they were trying to lead them in the wrong direction. And they would get upset with the Apostle Paul because he was sticking close to the, to the, to the doxology, the, the, the Word of God, the way it should be taught. Now, they were sincere. These preachers were sincere. And you've known many who've preached to you, on, on, even on national levels. But they're preaching for the wrong motives. A lot of, you know, if you're preaching to see how much money you can make or uh, get a big bank account or have everybody know you, folks, that's the wrong reason. You need to be preaching to, for the glory of God. Now, these false apostles, they caused a lot of confusion in the church at Corinth, and they've cast doubt on the leader, Paul's leadership. And they, these false leaders have devalued grace. And they try to install themselves in that journey and, and, and be a part of that. And, and, and listen, anytime you devalue grace, you're in trouble. Because God's Word is a, is a, a salvation of grace. That's the only way that a person gets to heaven. Amen. Now Paul resorts 
tonight, it's kind of funny because Paul tonight resorts to using almost human tactics in, ex in preaching to them. And he says, now this is not what Christ would say. And if it, he says that right in, in his word tonight. He says, now this is not how Jesus would say this, but I'm going to say it like this. In other words, he's, he's, he kind of gets a little bit edgy uh, tonight. It makes, he uses sarcasm tonight a lot and insinuates that, uh, insinuations to make his point. And so tonight, kind of listen to it because it is God's Word and it contains God's Word. But understand also, Paul is writing and he's a little aggravated. All right? Have you ever been aggravated? Just a little bit. <laughs> and you, you find new ways of saying things when you get aggravated, don't you? Yeah. Now, so tonight, tonight we're going to hear Paul preach, and he's he's a little bit aggravated at these people, and and he's frustrated, and he's ranting a little bit, and and he's venting, and uh, because he knows the dangers of leading people in the wrong direction. Now, he's his motives are right. His motives, I mean, he's you know we're supposed to be angry when people lead other folks away from Christ. We're supposed to get angry about that. I I, I sometimes I get. Surprise! Christians, they think, well, we're supposed to just put up with everything and, and smile and be happy. Well, there's times we need to get mad as, you know what? Yeah. I mean, we, we need to get mad. And, and uh, we need to stand up on for what we believe and say what we mean. And so tonight, Paul is at that point. He's kind of been in a corner. And he's been writing these long letters, made several visits to these, this church. And now tonight, he's letting them have it. So here's that's where we are tonight. We're going to be looking at Paul and his, not at his best, but in some ways it's his best too. He starts out by saying, I hope you'll put up with me in a little foolishness. He says, yes, please put up with me. Now, he says, I, I, I'm going to speak tonight and I'm, gonna, I'm frustrated and I'm going to be ranting a little bit because you, you've been leading, these people, are, you're following people that are leading you in the wrong direction. Then he says in verse 2, I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. I promised you to, to one husband, to Christ, so that I might present you as a pure virgin to Him. But I'm afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Can I say it like this tonight? Every one of us, without exception, are capable of leading people astray. Every one of us can do it. There's not an exception in the house. We can do it. We can lead people in the wrong way. Anytime we lead them out of ego or lack of humility or pride or arrogance, we're capable of leading people in the wrong direction. And so we have to really evaluate our life and make sure we're hanging close to the Word of God because we can we can do we can be led by the devil. The serpent's cunning uh, can can lead your mind astray and lead us from sincere devotion to Christ, as he says to these people. But nothing, nothing is more important to you and I than staying true to the Word of God, than staying true to the Lord. Nothing is more important, and and uh, we can't give up on that. We can't allow ourselves to have moments of, of failure or whatever because we're leading people. People are watching you and they're watching me. We have to be careful that we lead them in the right direction. Now tonight I want to deal with, because I think Paul deals with this, so I found out this is what he wants to say. He wants them to know what causes us to lead people straight. What, how, what gets in the mix? How do we get confused or how do we lose our focus? And, and we, we start, and how do we lead people astray? What causes? Well, I picked out a few outline things tonight, and I'm going to suggest to you that uh, these are possibly some of the reasons we lead people astray. And the first one is that sometimes we're a little too concerned about how we look or how we appear to others. And when we get overly concerned about how we appear, how, in other words, am I looking smart? Or, you know, uh, do, do I look like a, a fool? When we get concerned about how we look, it's, we're, it's going to be easy for you to lead somebody astray. Because there's going to be times as you follow the Lord, you're going to look a little silly. You're going to be going up the down staircase. You with me? You're going to be walking different than this world walks, thinking different than this world thinks, and speaking and acting differently. And so we have to be careful because we appear where we're so concerned about how everybody perceives us. 
And when we do, we're in trouble. Let's read a little bit here in verse 5. I do not think I am in the least inferior to those super apostles. I, I may indeed be untrained as a speaker, but I, I do have knowledge. You see, we have made this perfectly clear to you in every way. Was it a sin for me to lower myself in order to, evade, evade, to elevate you by preaching the gospel to you free of charge? See, here's the thing. Paul always preached to this church in Corinth. Now, not all churches, but to the church in Corinth. He refused to receive any support from them. Now, he had a reason for that. The Holy Spirit was leading him in that direction. He did receive support from other churches and other ministry and other people. But when he got to Corinth, he drew a line in the sand. He said, I will take no money from this church at all. And so he's a concern that... Uh, that he's devalued his ministry because he didn't charge for it. You know, sometimes when something's free, we don't think it's very important, do we? Really, we're that way. If somebody wants to give us something free, we know, okay, thanks. But that, they might give you something that's valuable, but because it was free, we sometimes devalue it. And so Paul said that's probably what you've done. <clears throat> Let's keep reading verse 8. I robbed other churches by receiving support from them so as to serve you. Now, he doesn't mean he broke into their storehouses of money and robbed them. He simply means this, I took money from them. I, they offered money for me and I took it from them <clears throat> so I could serve you free. He said, that's why I did that. <clears throat> and when I was with you and needed something, I was not a burden to anyone. For the brothers who came from Macedonia supplied what I needed. I've kept myself from being a burden to you in any way and will continue to do so. He said, I'm going to just keep doing it this way. This is how I'm going to be with you Corinthians. No I'm going to receive nothing from you. And, and uh, I think Paul was concerned that he would appear weak because of that, or appear some, and uh, his message was not of importance to them. And he said, no, guys, look, that's not at all the way this is. Uh, we need to stop being so concerned about how we appear to others. Do you, uh, do you care how people receive you and where you work? Do you, are you concerned about how you look there? Do you, you do you want to look like a oh, a, a, a smarty know-it-all and and uh, have it all together? How do you want to appear? Well, it's okay to appear to, as you really are, but when we begin to put on airs and we begin to to you know uh, try to be smarter than God in some ways and 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 refuse to fall to to be a witness for Christ at work, at home, in the community, wherever, folks, listen, we're too concerned about how we look. Some, some people don't want anybody to know they're a believer. No, don't tell anybody. And, uh, and some people want to be thought of as super spiritual. So they all, they've got a Bible everywhere they go and they got their car plastered with, with uh, bumper stickers and then they drive like the devil. You know, so. <laughs> By the way, that's one of my pet peeves. If you've got a Christian bumper sticker on then don't. Let me say it like this. If you want to drive like the devil, don't put a bumper sticker on your car. <laughs> Tell people you're a Christian. But we're a little concerned about how we appear to others. And, and, and it's important that we, it, we know that when we do that, we have a tendency to lead people astray. Now the second thing I want to talk about tonight, and Paul begins to talk, look at is here. <clears throat> it goes back to the core values of, of the Bible. What are the, the two, what is the one commandment of the Bible? How do you summarize all the Ten Commandments into one? And, and when I say that, you know where I'm going here. You're to love God with all your heart and your neighbor as yourself. Right? He said that, Jesus said that summarizes all the Ten Commandments. That puts it down to where we can get a hold of it. And I think tonight that when we lead people astray, it's we've stopped loving completely. Or we've, we're loving people not as much as we should. We, we've drawn back. We've pulled back a little bit on our love for others. And when we do, we're going to get ourselves in situations where we're going to lead people astray. Let's read verse 10 and see what we're talking about here. As surely as the truth of Christ is in me, nobody in the regions of Achaia will stop this boasting of mine. Why? Because I, because I do not love you. That's sarcasm. He says, why? Because I don't love you. He says, God knows I love you. Now friends, our own comfort can get in the way of our loving people. Did you know that? Our own comfort can get in the way. Um, I recently had an experience that uh, that I'm certainly not very proud of. I uh, was uh, it was a, a late one evening and and uh, a couple of phone calls, uh, a couple of uh, you know had some things. I wanted to sit home and relax. 
I want to take my boots off and, and be comfortable. And, and everybody wants to be that way once in a while, right? But love sometimes demands we get up and put our boots on and go do something. Even if it's late at night. Even if we're not wanting to get... See, and, the, and I know that I've not acted like... I, I'm, I'm not proud of the way I acted uh, around a couple of situations. Because I, I was tired and I wanted to stay home. And I needed to be out and, uh, and, and uh, talking to people and sharing and rest and bringing love to the Lord, of the Lord to others. So, I, I'm trying to, to do better. And I, I'm going to say, don't allow a day off or a vacation or anything to limit your love for people. No matter... Uh, the last thing I'm going to talk about tonight is the whatever it takes. Have you ever heard of whatever it takes sermon? Uh, whatever, whatever it takes sermon is kind of what I'm talking about tonight. And, and when we love incompletely, or when we don't love enough, then we get into trouble and we'll lead people astray and leave ourselves with a black eye and maybe the Lord too. Now, the next thing I want to talk about, Paul talks about, is this is the most serious of all. This is the most dangerous. Because we're, if we're not careful, we will forget or not realize who's behind our motivations. And when we forget who's motivating us and why we're doing things, we will lead people astray. For instance, they say in this next text in verse 12 through about 15 or 16 to verse 15, they, they're gonna, we're going to talk about the devil coming in to the church and leading some of them astray. He said, the devil himself did it. Let me just read it to you. And I will keep on doing what I'm doing in order to cut the ground from under those who want an opportunity to be considered equal with us in the, in the things they boast about. For such people are false apostles, deceitful workers, masquerading as apostles of Christ. And here we go. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. It's not surprising then if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness. Their end will be what their actions deserve. Let me set up. A scenario things. What if around the corner here in just a moment the devil would walk in here? What would he look like? Well, let me, let me surprise you. He wouldn't have a red suit on <laughs> and a pitchfork. He would look just like a good old farm country boy. He'd have cotton on his boots and and you know he'd just be he just look like one of the rest of us. He'd walk in here and. Uh, and he'd, you know, he'd be just like a, he'd just fit in. He'd just be one of us. We we love him, love him to be here. We welcome him. We give him a good seat. We get try to get him some coffee and a donut or something. You know, we'd be proud to have him here because he masquerades himself. He doesn't ever come into our lives and says, "Boo, I'm the devil. Look out, boo, be scared." No, he sneaks in and brings uh, himself and his message to us in a subtle way. So if you're waiting for the devil to, to recognize the devil, let's put it that way, if you're waiting to recognize the devil by the way he looks or reacts, he's going to fool you every time. Amen. You, he's going to get you. <clears throat> We're open to suggestion from somebody like him. <clears throat> we can be misled by Satan and, and as well as we can be led by the Lord. We can also be led by the devil too. See, resist the devil. Resist him. And he will flee from you. So when you recognize him, now how do you recognize the devil? We're going to talk about that in the next series when we jump into James. We're going to be talking about how to recognize him, how to work with him, how to resist him, and all. But if it, what you need to do tonight is to recognize when he's speaking to you, to recognize when he's trying to influence you. And how are you going to know that? Well, generally, he's going to he's going to put questions in your mind about the Word of God, about the reality of Christ about the, the level of forgiveness. He's going to bring. He's going to try to make you doubt your own self and doubt your salvation and doubt your ministry, doubt your mission. He's going to just cast doubt, put doubt in your mind. And, and because Christ does... Listen now. Jesus never lays guilt on us. Listen. You need to hear this. How many of you feel guilty? We all feel guilty, don't we? I mean, most of us feel guilty all the time. Listen to me. The Holy Spirit does not bring guilt to His children. He never gives guilt. So when you feel guilty, that doesn't come from God. That comes from someplace else. Because He doesn't bring guilt. All He does is bring forgiveness and hope and, and, and the promise of, of uh, redemption. 
God doesn't work with guilt. That's a, that's a human traitor. That's a trick from the devil. So resist him and, and flee from him and never give in to him at all. So now let's get to that whatever it takes. Let's get to that whatever it takes. I'm going to read now verse 23, the last part of verse 23. Paul says, I've worked much harder, been in prison. Now he's trying to compare himself to those other false preachers that's been in the church there. He said, I've worked harder. I've been in prison more frequently. Been flogged. Now you know what that means? Beaten. Flogged more severely. And been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews 40 lashes minus one. Five times he was beaten with 39 lashes. Five times. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. A night and a day in the open sea. Do you understand what he's saying? He was, he was floating in, a, in the open sea without a life jacket. He may have had to hang on to a piece of board or something, but he was floating a day and a night in the open sea. I just want you to get that. All he's been through. I have been constantly on the move. I've been in danger from rivers in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city and in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. I've labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I've, I've known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I've been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. Who is weak and I do not feel weak? who is led into sin, and I do not inwardly burn. If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. The God and Father of the Lord Jesus, who is to be praised forever, knows that I'm not lying. In Damascus, the governor, uh, the governor under King Aretas had the city of Damascus guarded in order to arrest me. But Verse 33, But I was lowered in a basket from a window in the wall and slipped away from his, through his hands. Wow. Is anybody here want to sign up for, for that job? I don't believe... Wow! I mean, he had difficulty. I don't think there's a person in this room that's had that kind of difficulty doing your ministry. And Paul is trying to tell us here with this that he says, I am willing to do whatever it takes to lead people to Christ. Are you willing to do whatever it takes to lead people to Christ? Well, it's going to mean some changes in your life. It's going to mean some, some difficult decisions you're going to have to make. You're going to have to prefer others over yourself. You're going to have to seek the love of God more completely than you do today. And you're going to have to, to practice and, and flesh that out by loving your brother. It, it's going to take a radical change in most of our lives if we're going to do the whatever it takes. Now, let me ask you this. Uh, uh, let me challenge you with this. Um, when you are praying, now don't do this unless you're ready, but when you're praying and you feel the presence of God, and, and, and you have to do this only if you feel led to do it, say to the Lord, Lord, I'm willing to follow you wherever you go, wherever, whatever it takes, for how long, however long I have to stay. I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do. Now folks, be careful praying a prayer like that. Because Paul prayed it one like that, I'm sure, and see where he wound up. And, and it's going to cause some difficulty in your life. But think of the value. Think of the wonderful result if each of us would say, Lord, I want to be more like You. And I want to go where You want me to go. I want to say what You want me to say. When those things are at work in our lives, we're going to lead people to the Lord. We're going to lead people to Christ. I like to, to get human for once in a while and think, what's it going to be like when you get into heaven? When you walk in the door? Is there going to be two or three people up there say, thank you for what you did? Thank you. Or will it be 50, 100? How many people are going to be glad that you helped them find their way to heaven? And they're going to be, and they're right now they're going to be thankful for you. We can, we can lead people to Christ and that's our message and our mission. We must do that. But most of us, have to be willing to follow Jesus. And not just as long as it's comfortable. Uh, but we have to end 
that comfort and be on his time schedule and not just ours. <clears throat> Interesting comment I'm going to make is God works through his people. God works through his people. Just almost exclusively. Now that's not the meaning he can't work through other means and methods. But he chooses to work through his people. <coughs> And so, are you willing to let God use you? Are you willing to, to let Him direct your schedule, your, your, your time, your place? Are you willing to let God use you? So here's what we need to do. Follow God. Be sure you're leading people to Jesus. And you'll do that when you, especially if you've given up on yourself and said, Lord, I'll do whatever you want. And then love God with all your heart. Love Him with all your heart. And others as yourself. You know, you can't do that in your human flesh. Did you know that? This, I'm not preaching a try harder sermon tonight. I, I don't need to, for you to try harder because you're going to fail trying harder. But you're going to have to, to let God work in you. And you can do this when you fall in love with Jesus. Too many of us, is, we've fallen out of love with Him. We've gotten cold and indifferent. But we have to fall back in love with Him. Because you can't love people unless you love the Lord. It's just not going to work. And that's how we show we love the Lord, is by loving people. Let's pray tonight. Lord.